Do you believe in terroir for whiskey? Does the environment, the climate, the air, water source, do all of those things have an effect on the taste? Well, today's Camp Dram is all about keeping things local. I'm Leanne and this is Scotch on the Bayou, where we celebrate the wonders of Scotch whiskey and the flavor of life in Louisiana. And today, again, we're not at the camp for a camp dram. We're making repairs from the flood and things are coming along and stay tuned at the end of this video and I'll give you an update on how things are going down there. But while we may not be at the camp, we're still gonna be sipping some whiskey for this weekend. And particularly one from Isla. Today's Camp Dram is a sentimental favorite and I'll share why that is in a bit. And that bottle would be Brooklady 2011 Isla Barley. And this is all about keeping things local. And while Brooklady is an absolutely stunning Victorian era distillery, they are doing things their progressive Hebridean way. And really going out and, and doing some interesting casking. They've always been avant-garde. That comes from their leadership of Jim McEwen and also, of course, Adam Hannett now. This expression is unpeated and it features barley that was grown locally on Isla. A quick look at the bottle and the labeling and it will list out all the different farms where that barley was sourced. Brook Lottie is very much about the terroir for this expression and where they're getting their water source, the fact that the barley was grown there on the island, all of those things add up to does terroir really have an effect on the taste of whiskey? That's a very hotly contended subject and one I'm not going to get into too deeply here. One camp says absolutely, it's all about where things come from that have an effect in the final product. Others think there's too many chemical reactions going on for the final product to have any type of resemblance of environment left over. All I know is how the whiskey tastes. And to me, that's pretty important, right? So the 2011 version of the Isle of Barley uh, comes in at 50 ABV or 100 proof. It's non-chill filtered, no color added, and again, 100% Isla Barley. This is a six-year-old whiskey. The casking for this expression is 75% ex-bourbon casks, American oak, and 25% ex-wine, European oak. Let me know in the comments if you've had this particular expression of Brooklady and what you thought about it. And go ahead and hit that like button if you're enjoying this. Really helps me grow the channel. So let's get into the tasting notes. First of all, the color is a beautiful light straw. It's a little viscous. There's a, on the nose, you get a sweetness at first. And there's a, a light funk to this. Slightly earthy, almost mossy almost like wet like maybe wet grass now this expression is non-peated so there's no medicinal or you know peaty funky notes it's not that type of funk it's a totally different type of funk this is a, a mossy grassy kind of funk there's a underlying sweetness there that is more like fresh fruit or an apple or a pear. It's, it is very fresh. I'm getting fresh grass, all of that. Okay, now let's go for a taste. This is malty and quite savory. I mean, the sweetness is there, but it's very light. And the sweetness is more a citrus, almost like a a ruby red grapefruit. You kind of get that grapefruit aftertaste. It's interesting because you get the sweet off the malt, but 
but the citrus doesn't overpower it. it it's actually quite complimentary. I'm liking the balance of this. It's got a little bit of kick of a spice towards the end from the middle of your tongue to the front. And, you know, 50% ABV. It's going to have a little heat on it. It's got a pretty lengthy finish. You know, kind of a white pepper and a mint thing kind of going on at the end. There's also a dryness to the finish. Almost, going back to the grapefruit, almost like that white pith on the inside of the peel. It's kind of got that going on too. It's very clean. You've got a sweetness on the nose, but this mossy kind of wet grass smell. And then the taste sweetness is more of a citrus with the malt and, and this underlying grapefruit kind of dryness. It's very interesting. Now, this is a sentimental favorite. And sometimes I wonder if things taste better in a particular situation because it does taste a little differently than I remember it when the first time I had it. Now I'm in my backyard in Louisiana. But the first time I had this dram was on Isla. And this was poured into my glass by one of the farmers who actually grew the barley that went into this bottle. That was a mind-blowing experience for me. This is a man who is working against the odds to actually grow barley on Isla. It is not an easy thing to do. They get twice as much rain there than they do on the mainland. It's rocky and craggy and the elements are not a farmer's friend on Isla. Yet, these farmers that are on this label work with Brookbody to make sure that they had the resources there on the island to make this expression. And getting to meet Hunter Jackson through the Isla Whiskey Academy was an absolute delight and he was very gracious to show us around his farm and we got to see his dogs, the pigs, the whole nine yards. And having this dram in the barn with all the elements a barn brings along with my classmates, it was a really extraordinary dram. I still think this is an extraordinary dram. It's a very tasty dram. I also think being in an environment like that makes it more special to you. Uh, when I got back home and I saw this on the shelf at a local store, I was very, very happy. Every time I open this bottle up and pour a dram, I'm taken back to that barn with those great people in that great environment and it tastes even better. So tell me in the comments what you think about this bottle. What do you think about terroir and does it really apply to whiskey? And also, have you ever had an experience where you've tasted whiskey in a particular environment, locale, and it tasted better than you had it the next time? It's interesting stuff and I'd love to hear about it. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and now I'll give you a quick update on how things are going at the camp. The water has finally receded around the camp. We had about three and a half feet of water. And if you go back and, and look at that flood video, you kind of see at the end that we were thinking we did get water, we got water. Basically the water went up through the subfloor, which had particle board under the linoleum that was put down in 1962. And let's just say the particle board disintegrated. So we spent much of Memorial Day shoveling all of that out and we've got it all cleaned up, ready to be remodeled now. All the drywall's out, the floor's out, and we're gonna have an extreme camp makeover. So I hope to be doing camp drams at the camp soon. Probably in about another month we'll be able to film down there. And I really appreciate all the love, and people asking how things are going. I appreciate your support. Thanks for coming along with me on my Scotch journey. And until next time, Slanji, y'all.